I know it's hard. I mean, I've, I've been there. But once you go all the way back and you realize, oh, my gosh, it's just a, a, a damn cartoon. That's all it's ever been is a cartoon. Here, here you have a, um, a natural being in its natural state, kidnapped and altered of its natural state, taught to be something else, psychologically broken and then reconstructed, recreated to be something else. Uh, called something else, constantly called something else, and altered of free will in, in all of its, its, uh, being because of the, those names. That is what alters your being. You are being taught now that you have to be a female. What, what's a female? I went through all of my childhood not, I, I just, I didn't fit in. I, I kept, thinking to myself, you know, oh my gosh, I am not like other females. Why am I not like other females? Well, no, I'm not like other PC product, but it took me forever to realize that, you know, and, and get past all of these constructs, the constant constructs. You know, I, I would see these females falsely accusing somebody and using that, that abuse card and, and using the Violence Against Women Act and, and everything else. And, I, you know, you know that those concepts should not even exist. They don't exist in, in any form of natural state or reality of any kind. You know, now you've got the uh, potential for abuse. You've got thought crimes. You've got, he hurt my feelings. How the heck do you hurt a feeling when an emotion is a psychologically created thing, it, it's um, it's something so profound to see the backwards movement of human being going backwards and not forward based on such small, insignificant things, such as a construct of an emotion. Yeah, that, and that's played uh, to the hilt in all all areas of life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and now you have the, through the doctrine of chivalry, you have males protecting emotions. You're not protecting the human form. You're not protecting life. You're not protecting children. You're protecting emotions. You're yeah. keeping to, I mean, if you look at the concept in a natural state of lions, for example. Okay, so you have uh, a female lion. She's, she's the one that goes out and hunts. Dad stays home and takes care of the family, yada, yada. Okay. Now, picture a female lion with a broken nail whining on the ground and she's like just crying and crying and, 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 and complaining because her, her nails are broken or, or her new um, manicure is all messed up. Do you think that lion would walk past her or would he stay there and cater to her? You know, and, and everybody needs to get back to that reality. It's like, what the heck are we doing? Yeah, you got to check out Rocco's Facebook page. He has a beautiful picture of the lion's Walking yep. in snow. Yeah. Yeah, I visit Rocco Van City's wall a lot. Um, we teach there and and share a lot of information and and um, yeah, he's got some great stuff on there. I, I go there a lot lots of times myself. Right. And and that's another thing, Rocco, when you were with that, you know, psychopathic female, you know, talk about that experience so that other people can can realize what's going on because here you are Every time the male tries to hold the female accountable in this society, she ends up breaking down, crying, whining, you know, doing all of these things. But you, you talk about it in your own, your experience, because you, you've been there. Right. I, well, I tell people, um, you know, we're the, let's just get down to brass tacks. I mean, what, what quote, unquote, got me, you know, is, is this woman came into my life and, and I'm, no, I'm weighing things out. Oh, and she was up front. She was turning all her attention to me and there with the the wallet. Let me get this. Let me get this. Your children need this. This, you know, always in my face with uh, presence, you know. And and then so I'm listening to this and um, out of it. Come, because I, we've had help before, you know, that doesn't impress me. But, uh, this is what I pondered, this is what I was sold on when she said, uh, I'll love your children like my own. And, uh, I was suckered and I believed that. I trusted that. And, um, you know, worst mistake of my life, I would say. 
so she got in, she got in, you know, I subscribe to the benefits, you know, that, that she was bringing in and everybody up. Well, at first, you know, the children, every, the children are easily bought off, you know, shiny new things, gadgets, trips here, trips there. Um, and, and, but they didn't get it in secret. She just wanted to get rid of my children so we could have alone time. And I hated that because the way she said it, she just said, well, we can just get them, you know, get them out of the way. The way she would refer to that. It's like, I understand and I comprehend children and how they can, um, you know, put you through the ringer, but I never in my life have, have had somebody refer to it as a bother. And, you know, and that really, I, I was in, I was in at that point, and it bothered me. I said, there, this woman is disturbed. There's something deeply disturbed. And then uh, the revelations came out, you know. She'd say things like, I'm used to getting what I want. And I'm like, wow, that really defined her. That was uh, like opening up a, a a closet and skeletons. I saw her for what she was. How old was she when she was stomping her feet like a four-year-old? Oh, let me get you. Like, let me tell you this. I, th I think I'm the only one. She would literally pout, you know, curl the lip, and I just looked at her. And what did I say? I, I obviously showed my disapproval, but but she actually did that. So I mean, the the pouty. I mean, this is a, uh, a, a you know a quote unquote mature woman as far as the world would say. You know, an R N. Registered nurse uh, had her has her own um, uh, home uh, health care agency, so that means she's in the genocide industry herself. Absolutely, she tried to kill you when you were in that. Yeah. Oh gosh, oh gosh, absolutely. That's unbelievable. Pull the plug, Rocco. Oh, yeah, pull right. the plug, and there's there was no plug, but she wanted somebody to produce a plug and just pull it. You know, uh, right. it was unbelievable. She couldn't stand to see him living. Yeah. That's what well, you call a, a pattern, man. She's probably seen it so many times that, you know, somehow or another, she, some kind of she gets off on it. Absolutely, and, and they do. If you look at what these females are all about, or that type of female, the psychopath, it's always penis envy. And so every time she gets one over on the male, she's she feels like she's won. That's that's a, a sign of that she's got a penis. And, yeah. and it's so sick. Right. And, and I hate saying that, but that's the bottom line. It's penis envy. Yeah, and and then it was funny because she saw the opportunity ripe. We had, uh, you know, we were uh, we were dating and then, you know, moving into that. Now, this woman remembers everything, but when it came down to it, you know, she didn't remember the, uh, you know how she approached me with marriage? She said, the kids are on board with this. Yeah, uh -oh. and then and then I remember telling her that, and you know what? For the woman who remembers everything, who revels in the fact that she remembers everything, she, you know what she said to that? I don't recall that. You know, it was like talking to, you know, uh, she pulled a Reagan. I I don't recall. Right. Selective selective memory, huh? Yeah, and 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 it was in a state involved, involved, and she preyed on me. She had her. Um, one of her friends, you know, uh, former lovers or current, I, I don't know, an FBI agent. And he was spying, you know, on me later. But at first, you know, we, when I was in statutory land, uh, we found out that the uh, the first executor of my late wife's estate uh, had, uh, you, you know, was, was, was stealing, basically. So this all started off. With the help of the FBI. Now get this, and there's so much off the record that that happened, but I'll fast forward this. Uh, she she obviously uses her friends and manipulates. So when the when everything was fine, quote unquote fine, you know I had the benefits, right? Hey, I got the FBI working for me. I got my personal spy. This guy actually spied uh, and pried <coughs> into a bank account for us. This is one of my children. One of the cousins uh, talked my my oldest daughter out of oh gosh, I don't know how many thousands that she had made working for me. You know, and and I, I've been preyed on by so many people. Yeah. It's not even funny. The cousin came forward and said, "Your dad will take that the money. You better give it to me. I'll put it in the bank." 
And and then she, yeah. you know, the daughter came to me. I'm like, honey, that was your, you earned, you know, those funds. That's yours. And this is, this is the sheeple mentality. So she was, uh, conned out of, uh, you know, all those FRNs. It, it was like 4,000. So this FBI agent looked into a bank account for us. So I was, I admitted I was enjoying the privileges only to find out later on what it all cost me. And right. in waking up saying, this is wrong. I, I finally took a stand because this woman was just berating my late wife. She was jealous of my late wife. It's like, are you kidding me? She actually, said, you know, what was she stupid? And, and, and that just broke me. I said, you know what? You can say a lot, but you don't insult who, who insults the dead, you know? Psychopath. Right. But that goes back to the priest thing too. And, and yeah. confessing to the priest here, she was, she brought an FBI agent into your bed, pretty much your marital oh, bed. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's the same thing. I, They've I, got all your information because you're sharing it. You trust these people. And that's the, right. that's the bottom line. That's the snake in the garden. Right. You know what her big thing was? She, she told me, she, she admitted to me. Yeah. She actually had a, a threesome. With oh. this, uh, F he's an FBI slash United States Postal Inspector. I don't know if he can work in both, but I, my research, I know Office of Inspector General handles well, what yeah, he's that's what he's doing. In in, I just know the guy can carry a, a, a you know, a pistol on an airplane. So, right, uh, that's the Department of Justice, you know, and the right. whole court system itself. It maintains the FBI as the military for Congress. They're just directly under the attorney general, the uh, general counsel itself, calling out for your demise. I mean, they've got it all sewn up as long as you buy into it and trust those idiots. Yeah. So I was uh, pretty much stalked from from day one. I, I met her on an online site, you know, AFF, Adult Friend yeah, Finder. Yeah, did you learn your the, lesson? Oh, I learned did my lesson. Learn lesson. The pit of hell. The pit of <coughs> hell and despair where people just clamor. To to meet other uh, desperate people. Well, yeah, I guess. when you're when you're lonely. I mean, you you had lost your wife and everything else, and right. I can I can see it from that point of view. But then right. you know, later on the the misrepresentation again. Oh hell yeah! I mean, it again. was I dealt with I dealt with uh, over two years of sickness with my you know, and I uh, my our relationship obviously. It shut off, you know, there was, as far as sexually, you know, I mean, we, we had love to uh, a much higher degree, much in different areas, but, you know, she was, she had cancer. I, I was there. So, you know, after she passed and like six months later, it was like nature came a knocking on a, on a, like a summer night, you know, it was just like all at once. Right. Bam. But she also offered you so much, you know, I yeah. love you. I love you. I'll take care Absolutely. of you. Absolutely. That was it. I waited out. I wasn't, yeah, I uh, I'm not a. <laughs> how should I say it? I, I, you know, I, I get offers. Let me put it that way. Right. Which is so. It's, it's uh, natural, especially in a society when the predator is on the make. She's always there. She's always waiting in the wings to find that widow. She's always waiting in the wings to find the widower. Always waiting in the wings to find that broken mail so she can take advantage. Oh, of her. and in the estate, you know, I'm. She. Uh, I remember saying, you know, I used to make 80 grand, you know, and then obviously with the economy, you know, I, I, I know, I, plus I had, was in a head-on collision, so I was recovering from that as well, from the break of my neck, almost dying, a limo hit me head-on, so she was, she was there, you know, she actually brought me into the hospital, I had some uh, hardware taken out of my leg, and so she was there with that. Right. And uh just just um symbol. She had her eyes on the estate. Well let me tell you, later on she just started pumping me for you know, we need we need money, we need money and all of a sudden uh that 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 check came in for the um for the head on collision. I endorsed it over to her, you know, just short of you know, ninety eight thousand six hundred bucks endorsed it to her, you know, she, I need more, I need more. Then she turned into the ravenous money pit. She bought a house. I, 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 
I gave her, uh, no, I loaned her eighty thousand dollars for a down payment. She stole that. She she stole everything. I recovered me personally, just being six four and whatnot. I was I was talking to detectives, and they said, well that well that first executor, he he stole them, you know, he stole the money and everything. But we know who he invested it with. So I went and talked to that guy, and he actually wrote me a check for some sixty four thousand dollars that I recovered. And she spent that. She put a new roof on the house and all this other stuff. Right. So, so I'm but worth. Then later, she tried to claim the house. Oh, go oh gosh! That I was. was in, she grabbed eighty grand down payment, got my ninety-eight thousand six hundred, got another sixty-four grand, and then I. She proceeded to have me put the pressure on. I need money. I need money. I'm writing checks off of credit cards. It had to be another seven. The ten thousand, she was relentless. Right, and and I'm thinking, Leading okay, okay, I'm thinking of my children first, right? You, I'm between a, a rock and a hard place, and I did it to myself. I should have never put myself there. No, well, it's um, trust. It's trust. It's a new perverted version of trust. This female. <sighs> That psychopath is a predator. She lays in wait until you're on your knees. Yeah, face. and no wonder she was jealous of my first wife. You know, we were married for 17 years, 17 days. Uh, the epitome of, of love and trust. I had that. I tasted what very few people, I would say, have you know tasted. And uh, I went from heaven to hell. Right. I did oh. it myself. And, and now, what do you do? We, you, know, you, you got to repent. You got to stop taking their benefits. And then I realized who who I was, or the part I was playing. I realized I was playing a part, you know, as a as a dead thing, committing joinder to a dead thing. So, all this research, and then you know, meeting Bo, and then and meeting you years, and we finally. Um, come to the conclusion they are running so much game on us all. Uh, we're their chattel property. A 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. Biggest mistake, biggest con job in the world right there. Right, because of her ability to assign you. That's the whole bottom line mm-hmm. is that psychopathic mentality and her ability to assign you. She has a hand of God. She's got the authority of the Lord God there. To use that hand and redistribute you of all your assets. And in the end, bottom line, she doesn't make off with any of that money. She actually gives it all to the attorneys and everybody else to be her, her military. And she has no idea. I mean, we went right through that um, with uh, Michael, Michael. And, and Otis's story. Yours is the same. Bose is the same. And it's always the same story. She never really makes out with anything. She thinks she does because of all the presentations. But in the end, nobody gets anything. And she's the tool right. of the system, which is Absol- the absolute useful it's what, idiot. what everybody's been saying, you know, uh, all along. The attorneys. The, look, look at these. You know, Look at uh, any bankruptcy. You know, who comes away? I, I've been through that myself, you know, trying to get an investment funds back. And, and who comes first? The attorneys. Right. I remember... Uh, twenty five grand had invested. I got less. I got back less than three grand, and and just that. He, you know, you get these with these letters and a huge block of attorneys. You know, like three inches deep. You know, just this firm, that firm, this in a big paragraph. Oh, the, we come first, right? Then you. It, it's the same all over. It, this is this is Congress. This is um, a, a, attorneys. You know, which is Congress, just raping and raising the the public, the estates. This is what they do. Right. Uh, but the good news in that now is the action of marriage. Now, we've been talking about that this, this week in the classes and everything else. And people need to realize that the action of marriage is the actual being married. It, it doesn't have anything to do with the paperwork or anything else. And um, in all reality... 
who is <laughs> Carlene married to? She's married to the state. Absolutely. She's not speaking your word. She's speaking the word of the Lord God. She's speaking the word of the court. And so once that quick claim is done and you quick claim that thing back to its dad, it is responsible under the parental responsibility laws, under the parents betray doctrine, under every other aspect of their law. That's the thing that's responsible for her, not you. And that's the bottom line of all of the public law, because her actuality, her being is married to the state. She's never been married to you. Is is that is that the uh, the thing of risk? The thirty one, thirty. I mean, three eleven, thirteen. If they're found out, then they assume the risk. Is that the correct uh, law? Yeah, but it goes deeper than that because okay. the actual um, exchequer. Um, when you are a part of the exchequer, you actually are the debtor because she's assigning you. Right. So she makes you the debtor, and her husband is always responsible for the debt that she's creating. Now, under public law, of course, we go to the evidence, the evidence, and the evidence is that she is not married to you. She's never been married to you. She's married to the state, and so it's responsible as her husband for all of her works and actions. Right, yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, the most profound thing is that the just the marriage license in itself where you have an interloper, into a two-party contract. Right, and they call it interpleading. Interpleading? Okay, yeah, they okay. call it interpleading, and, and that's the bottom line of all of their bankruptcy laws and everything else. Um, they're interpleading on behalf of the state, protecting the state. Well, the state is her. It's always been her, and then the issues are the children. So how are they protecting the state? Because they're the ones that are married to it and are responsible for it, but they've been bringing that millstone around your neck. Right. No more fall guy here. No more fall guy. No more yeah. millstone around your neck because it doesn't go there. You know what? And, and we all got to, you know, thank God for, uh, you know, all this wisdom and, and walking the walk and uh, walking through the flames. So. Right. And that's what it says in the Bible. It says you're going to go through a trial by fire. And when you come out the other end, you, you're either going to be burned up or you're going to overcome the trial. Yeah, well, I would think that uh, not to the extent that Rocco went through, but I came close a few times, and the buzzers went off, and, uh, you know, I just said not, not having any of that because uh, not only that, but you see everybody else that's uh, maybe friends or whatever, and just the uh, pursuance of uh, trying to get more things becomes more uh, dominant in the relationship. An emotional thing. You know, I'm not satisfied. Uh, my emotions are hurting or whatever the hell you want to call it. Right. Never never made any any damn sense to me. I mean, yeah, right. ego. That's what I call yeah. it. Right. Yeah. If I get more things, I'll find, you know, it, that's the trap. I mean, we all have. It's modeled. If, if I have, just have this, I'll be happy. I'll be, I'll be finally, you know, settled in, in harmony. I just need that house, the car, the job, the garden, uh, the, the sportster, the, the sailboat. If I just have one more thing to bring me peace. Right. And there's nothing. <laughs> that. And, 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 that, and that's also the, the, um, whole thing about accountability when they're held accountable all of those things go away and they're half they, they're fa forced to look in the mirror they're forced to face themselves and what they are you know that that is the absolute bottom line right there where um you know forcing them to look in the mirror and, and all of their actions and their behaviors based on what want 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 i gotta be i want to be i want to be i want to be and all of these things, they can stack things all they want to when they're, they're, they're nothing. And that's what Jesus was saying. That is sin. That is without. They're without everything. They don't know the selves. They're not capable of realizing a self or a state of being. Um, so instead, they're stacking things. And that's where you come down to, you know, hoarding is like the, the um, uh, ultimate presentation. But hoarding is in other ways as well. I need that boat. I need that house. I need this stuff. I need this. I, I got to shop at eBay today. I've got to get all this stuff. And, and you know. Um, I need liposuction. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and, and altering and modifying the human body in order to make it more presentable or whatever else um, to fit the standards of society, the PC model. Um, all of these things are just 
it's absolutely disgusting on on one side and so profoundly sad on the other because of course the psychopath never is able to realize itself they're always going to be seeking something else because they're so empty they, they're not able to um uh, have that human compassion human empathy or any other feeling for mankind and so they have feelings for things. They're protecting things. They're holding on to things. They're collecting things. They're stacking things. They're counting things. And that's what determines them. And in the end, that's what gets them because accountability says, well, all of those things are gone. Yeah, exactly. All your effort, all your works have burned up. What's going to stand? Your things, your works. This is this is what we're talking right. about. Everything's going to be purified. Just and what's going to be left over? Are you going to have gold, silver, precious stones? Or are you going to have hay and stubble going into those uh, into that purification? You know, fire. Your spirit. You know, it basically is you know going to be judged. Right. You know? The definition of hell. It's the lower. Chambers of the exchequer. Well, what does that mean? Well, forever, the psychopath, once their things are all taken away and there's nothing left, they're in hell perpetually because they have to seek a new means of identifying themselves. And that's the saddest part. They're always going to be rushing out to do what we were taught to do through the education system. Be that good girl. Be that good boy. Be that good dad. Be that good mom. No, you're you're not right. You're um, you're bad. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. And all of these things have stacked and stacked and, and forced us as a human being or or humanity itself to seek the self, to seek some form of title. But that is in the fictional realm. Now, that is a socially engineered aspect of humanity. And, of course, here we are now. The social engineering is being dropped, divesting ourselves of all titles, everything that possesses us. But the psychopath is never able to do that. They're never never able to um, maintain itself because of that missing frontal lobe. And, and that's the eternity in hell. It's really something, boy, I tell you. And I agree with the idea you have to go through the tri the trials and the fire to have some kind of uh, awakening and to I and then to start really thinking about who you are as as you are. Right. Mm -hmm. 